بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين بشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي إن شاء الله in today's series of talk about the aqida we'll talk about another thing which is connected to our aqida or at least the correct understanding of that is very important for us which is the aspect of rizq uh, this is provision, risk, which is uh, written by Allah Azza wa Jal for us. But uh, we have to have the clarity on the subject, uh, uh, especially because all of you are here in the, in the colleges and universities because of you're trying to gain some skill sets so you can work and uh, make your earnings. Yeah. So uh, this aspect of it is a lot of times uh, misunderstood. And hence, it is important for us to have a clarity on it. And this has a huge impact on our lives. As we talked about last week, when we were talking about the, the, the concept of uh, the lifespan, we discussed that, uh, that the, uh, the lifespan of ours is written by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It cannot be increased, it cannot be decreased. And we can see that, we can feel it uh, around us all the time. Uh, but we, we talked about last week uh, about that subject. And this idea of nobody can give us more life or nobody can take the life away unless Allah has uh, uh, decreed upon us. So if the time for a human being is over, it cannot be increased. And if the time for him to live, nobody can take the life away from him. That, that actually has a huge impact on our lives. Many of the times we are, uh, we, our decisions are impacted by just this idea that somebody may harm us. Somebody may take my life away, hence we try to stay away from many of the actions which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us to be engaged in. And similar way, the concept of risk and the provision is, uh, works the same way. Many times we find that people try to abstain certain actions because thinking that as if, if I, uh, we are engaged in an action, we may, uh, the risk may be taken away from us. Okay? And uh, hence it's important for us to understand what the risk is. I'm going to start with this picture, and some of you, I, I, I at least know a couple of guys that have seen this picture, and uh, uh, there's a reason that I'm uh, putting this picture up there. And there's a story behind it. Uh, have you seen this? Yeah. Yeah? This picture? No, I hope you have seen the others. The story behind it. Okay. So there's a story of my life. So I'm sharing with you, and I, I probably share two of them. So this is one of the times when I was going to school here. Okay, so that's almost what I'm talking about. 30 years ago or so. So when I was going to school here and uh, I had a roommate, uh, uh, him and my, myself, we did not eat food for probably 24 to 36 hours. Um, uh, we were FOBs, came from Pakistan to here, uh, living on our own, and uh, we did not have parents, somebody was giving us food or something. And uh, of course, uh, not only that, money was limited for us too. So now, uh, we did not eat, I don't remember what was the reason whether we did not have money or whether we just were busy with exams and stuff and nobody had time to cook the food. And anyway, either way, we did not have food. And I still remember we walked from the main library here and we were walking down to one of our friend's house. He was on, uh, he, lived, he lived on Campbell Street, I believe. Um, and uh, we passed by his house, we entered his house and literally we were hoping we could go to friend's house while we eat something there. <laughs> And we enter the house and we find him, his, he has a pot in his hand with, with lentils, adas, and he's throwing in the garbage. He's about to throw, to throw in garbage. And we're like, man, we did not have food for <laughs> so long. And he, this guy is wasting food like this. So we told him, man, why are you throwing it? He goes, uh, there's fungus on the food, uh, on, the, uh, uh, on the adas, on the, uh, on the lentils. And there was fungus around it, obviously, on top of it. This is anybody who's familiar with how the fungus grows. So we said, man, there's no problem. It's just fungus on the side. <laughs> we'll take the fungus off and the rest of the, 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 rest of the lentils or, or dal in Urdu uh, is good for us to go. And that's exactly what we did. The, that we took off that uh, fungus from there and we warmed up the, the, the adas and he had some, some, some bread and we, alhamdulillah, ate and we were good to go. The idea, what I'm trying to present here is not just a story. The point is that uh, the part of the lentils that he had, that was part of our provision. 
This is risk that was written by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It had to end, end up in our stomachs. And we ate, alhamdulillah, we were, we were full and uh, everything went well. None of us got sick or anything. But the thing is, to understand, look, we did not work for that. Uh, to, to gain that risk also. And risk is not only, sometimes people think of it as if our paycheck or a profit that we gain out of, uh, if we have a business or something, or we are, uh, uh, whatever we are engaged in, we are able to get some money from somewhere. Money is not the only thing that's risk. Risk is anything in the world that we get benefit from. Okay? Whatever it is, Allah has it written for us. And uh, if we, uh, the, the thing that we, we get in this dunya uh, is written by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we are not accountable for how much of a provision we are able to gain in this world. What we are accountable for is how we get it and how we spend it. Okay? And when we have this understanding or clarity in the concept of the risk, we act very differently. Because we understand that, that I don't have to go crazy about running after the wealth or the things I can get benefit from. And many of the time we find people, they skip their obligations. And not only that, they also engage in haram thinking this way they can able, they, they'll be able to get more and more risk. While it is something that Allah has kept it to himself for each and every individual. Even every creature on the earth receives the risk from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, and the shaitan comes and he tries to convince us this way as if it is our skills, it is our intellect, it is our smartness that is the one that provides us the risk. While you will see down the road, and probably you've already been seeing it in your lifetime, that many times you find the smartest people that you can think of who are around you, they're not able to so-called so get the same amount of risk. A person who was much dumber than him or her, he's able to get it in this dunya. And it is not connected to that. And then think of it, if that's the case, no animal would have lived, survived in the world. They can't even, they don't have the intellect like the human beings. So. Uh, it's not the intellect and all the, uh, or, or our smartness or even our efforts gets us to us. And I'll talk about that also when I use the word effort as well. Okay. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned about the rest many, many places in the Quran. I'm just mentioning some of the verses so you get an idea of when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah is commanding us to First of all, to eat from what Allah has made it halal and tayyib, pure and uh, allowed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah is connecting it to the, the consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to the taqwa of Allah azza wa jal, if you are a believer. Similarly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah is the khalaqakum thumma razaqakum. Allah is saying, He is the one who has created you, He is the one who provides you. It's important for us to understand. Allah is not saying, that you are the one who are uh, the cause of your provisions. Allah is saying, Allah can provide you. Allah who خَلَقَكُمْ ثُمَّ رَزَقَكُمْ ثُمَّ يُمِيتُكُمْ ثُمَّ يُحْيِيكُمْ He is the one who provides you. He is the one who gives you death. He is the one who gives you life. Okay? And similarly, Allah says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَرْزَقُ مَنْ يَشَاء بِغَيْرِ حِسَابِ And Allah, who, he, whoever He wishes, He gives the rest or the provision to that uh, without any kind of a limit. So it's up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He is the one who gives. And there are many verses like that which are very clearly saying Allah is the one who provides. Allahu yarzukuha wa iyyakum. The yarzukahum Allah. Allahu yabsutu rizqa liman yasha. Allah is the one who can uh, uh, hold the risk or Allah is the one who can provide more risk to a person. And so on and so forth. It continues on about the idea of the provision. Now, there's a hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that says about the idea of the risk, the more clarity of it, that were the son of Bani Adam, son of the Adam alayhi salam, Bani Adam, if he tries to flee from his provision as he flees from death, meaning if he tries to run away from his provision Allah has written for him, like normally human beings think that they can run away from the death, but the death approaches them. Because there is, we know every one of us will taste death. 
So Allah, the hadith of Rasulullah says that provision follows the children of Adam the same way that death follows him. What I mean by that is whether you try to run away from your provision or you go towards provision, your risk, you will get it. Okay? You will get it in the same way. Whether you are going towards death or you are running away from death. What Allah has written for you, you will get it. The death you want. So our lifespan does not increase or decrease. Same way our risk does not increase or decrease. Okay? And when it comes to the obligation, see, it is an obligation for each and every one of us. Especially when it comes for putting the effort to gain the risk. It's an obligation on us to work for it, to put an effort for it. Okay? We are not accountable for how much we get. We are not accountable for how much, uh, uh, or, uh, 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 how much we get or how much we don't get in this world. Rather, we are accountable for how we get the risk and how we spend it. Okay? These are the, this is the idea I want you guys to leave with. And uh, uh, I'll give you a few examples, and then I'll talk about the concept of sometimes people think of it that uh, what about the verses and the ahadith where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about that the, the risk of the people can increase? What does it mean by increasing the, the risk? While well, this risk or the provision of all the human beings are written at the time when he was born, all those things were already there, decreed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during the, our lifespan we will get certain amount that Allah has written for us, okay? Now, moving forward, now there's an idea that needs to be distinguished. Sometimes we do not distinguish the, the, what is it, the, what's the difference between circumstances and the cause, or causes, which is haqiqatul halal and asbab. Asbab or sabab, so when we talk about the, the concept of uh, uh, circumstances, when we work, and we receive some risk, or even when we don't work, and we still receive the risk or the provision. These are actually circumstances. So for example, somebody goes to work, and he gets a paycheck, or she gets a paycheck. It's not the work that produced the paycheck you think of it. What was written for you, you get it. Many times it happens that, uh, uh, how many of you work or have worked in the past? Okay, how many of you have got Bonuses. Okay. Well, how, many, how many of those bonuses were unexpected? <laughs> were you expecting it really, that amount? Sometimes you're expecting more, sometimes you're expecting less. But you do get it, right? So it's unexpectedly, you get a bonus. Unexpectedly, sometimes, you in, your, your salary increases. And unexpectedly, it can happen, your salary can decrease as well. I was working in a company where they were doing the layoffs and the people who were not getting laid off, they were saying, okay, we're gonna do the salary cuts for you at that time. That's a different story that they made it up later on. But the thing is, the idea about the risk is, um, by the way, if you need it, it seems like there's some problem going on here, right? Technical problems. I do have a recording of the audio. You wanna match it later on that you can do that also. Okay. All right, we're well, moving forward. So uh, the idea we have to distinguish is about the circumstances. And when it comes to the risk, the, uh, we, uh, in a lot of time, there is a people do not distinguish between the circumstances that, reach, that, that provides you the risk and the cause. And even though people say that, that risk comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But when it comes to actions, it does not match the actions. Even though people are saying that, the risk comes from Allah, but when it comes to their action, they, are, they think the risk actually comes from their skills. Risk comes from the amount of effort they place. Risk comes from if you are smarter than the others, and so on and so forth. And that, see, see, I'm talking about the people who say the risk comes from Allah. But the back of their mind, they're thinking this way. But if you, if you go in detail, go in depth, or just look and analyze this idea how you get the risk. You realize that it's not the suburb, it's not the cause. When we say cause, cause means by that every time you do something, there's an effect of it. Okay? Every, every, every action you want to take, there's an effect. Like when we say that the suburb for Salat al is that the decline of the sun. Right? 
you, you, you heard this the idea before, some of you probably. But so now, whenever this sabab happens, now Salat al Duhr is in effect. The obligation of praying Salat al Duhr is there. Even though Salat al Duhr is always obligation for us, five daily prayers are always obligatory, but it comes in effect when the cause happens. Right? So, same way, all the other salat that we talked about, with the movement of the sun. So we say this is how the, the salat uh, uh, effect comes in. But when it comes to the provision and the rest we'll talk about, we find that the, a person, the people who are of the same intellect, put in same effort, one is getting less provision than the other. And sometimes it's not even any effort is linked to it. Somebody dies in the family. Could be a father or mother dies and they leave some inheritance and you are getting from inheritance money. Sometimes you, you get the inheritance from people you did not even know of that they are leaving anything for you somehow. Or there was something you were connected to them uh, that you were able to inherit from them. Same way you can find wealth sometimes, uh, like a treasure, you, you hit the treasure. And uh, I'm not talking about love or something because that's haram, yeah. But when I talk about you find a treasure, sharam, that can belong to you. And there's of course uh, the whole thing about around it, with the, how much of, the, the, of it goes to the state, and, which is one fifth of it, and how much you can keep it. But you, you are able to find some wealth which is you were not expecting. And it goes on and on, and on a daily basis this, these things happen to us. But we don't realize that, we don't connect it. That all those things that which are happening, the things which are coming to us on a daily basis. A child is born, and before he was born, we see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created a mean for him in the womb of the mother that he has been nourished. And even after that, he continued to be a, continue able to get the provision. He's not the one who's doing anything. Look at the child. That when he's born, he is helpless. Unless somebody feeds him, somebody cleans him, somebody washes him, somebody clothes him. He may not even survive. But Allah has made the means for him that he is getting his provision. Until, so, so some of us, until they are 18, 19, 20, 20, 22 years old, they are still being taken care of by somebody else. Right? So it's not that the, the, our own efforts all the time that gives us the risk. We, we see that in our lives all the time. We are, we are able, but we unfortunately do not connect with our lives. Hence, we see that it has such a huge, sometimes negative impact on our lives. If we do not understand this idea, and we start thinking it's only my effort that brings it. And if my, so the sabab or the cause of our provision is connected to our efforts. If we think, think this way, then our, we will be completely off in our life and our priorities of life will be very different. Okay? Now, uh, when it comes to the haqiqat al-halal or the circumstances that what we, the way we get that is, is actually the circumstances that are giving us, providing us with this. But those circumstances are not under our control. Since they are not under our control, it means that this, at the end of the day, the provisions that we make are uh, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He has written, and as I mentioned in the previous verses, that's where Allah is saying very clearly that the rest, Allah is the one who provides us the rest. Okay? So from a reality and from the Quran and the Sunnah, it is clear that it's Allah who provides us. Okay. <clears throat> Moving forward. Um, another example that I gave before, the guys over here. And because, the reason I brought these two examples, they're connected with your school here, okay? So, uh, so I was actually coming from Union Station, and I had a sandwich during the evening time. Uh, it was a subway sandwich, or some sub, it's a subway sandwich. So, um, I had said I was not going to eat. I was thinking of, or normally when I walk from walk from uh, Union Station to here, you find somebody, right, who is uh, asking for some help, and I thought, okay, I will hand it over. And uh, I walked all the way from Union Station to UIC, did not find anyone to, that day. And I, I thought, okay, I'll walk back, I'll find somebody this time. And I walked back all the way back, because I used to, I was working at, in Union Station at that time. So I walked back there, I still did not find anyone who I could give the sandwich to. But when I entered into the Union Station, it's still no beggar or something who can ask for, ask, ask for food. I felt like the guy, he is in need. 
And I talked to him and I asked him like this, uh, I apologize to him that if I'm crossing any boundary, that I just asked, would you like to have a sandwich? And he, this guy was hungry. I just kind of guessed and I, I, I talked to him. And he was very hungry and he took the sandwich and he ate it. The point here is that this was written for him. I started my journey from Union Station to UIC, finding, looking for people who could take the sandwich. And then walked back again, thinking I would find somebody. I did not find anyone in this whole walk, but I found the person in Union Station where I started my journey from. And that was that belonged to him. See, I don't want to, to think that the risk is only food. This is anything that we benefit from. I'm just giving some of the examples which are linked to the food. It can be anything. You can have, you can see that there are many times you can have two exactly same stores open next to each other, selling the same thing, one of the businesses is making more money than the other. Right? I went to, what's the name of the place uh, in Schaumburg, that uh, halal chicken place? Uh, can you hear me? What, what's it called? Huh? It's called Birds. Uh, birds, yeah. Now it's called uh, Birds, yeah. There's a restaurant right next to it, selling pretty much the same food, yeah? Uh, am I right? No. <laughs> uh, I did not taste the food, but he is selling chicken also, the fried, the whatever, grilled oh, chicken no. and stuff. You're talking about Vasco's, and then right next to it, Birds is selling it. So birds something like that. Next. Okay, so Vasco's is the one, the good one, yeah? Yeah. The one that people sell, uh, okay. So, there's another set place there, looks exactly the same. Maybe the food is, I don't know, I eat, I don't know. But, the, but you find that other one is completely empty. Birds is empty. Okay, so that, that sandwich place is completely empty while that Vasco's is theirs. And you find the pretty much full all the time. But whenever I went there, maybe because I went with 10, 15 guys, so it got full. But, uh, so the, the point here is, it's not your effort that will bring in the risk for you. It's not, it's not. Yes, but, the, but our accountability is on the effort. <laughs> so I'm not trying to make you guys lazy bums by presenting this idea of the risk is in the hand of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm just trying to make sure that we understand that we don't kill ourselves if we are not able to receive and we do not become arrogant because we have more than the others. We have to be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when Allah provides us and if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keeps the risk away from us, then in that case we should be patient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There must be, there is some wisdom from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whether He gave us more or less. See, look, in both cases, there is a test for us. What do we do when Allah has blessed us with a lot of wealth? What do you do with the wealth? Because now we are accountable for that. Whatever we are, we have. Whether it's wealth, whether it's our knowledge that we carry, whether Allah has given us help, all this, these things Allah has given us, we are accountable for that. And now when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keeps it away from, these, from us these things, whether it's our help, whether it's wealth, whether, uh, well, whether it's even our intellect, Allah has given us less than the other. Now, how do we behave in those circumstances? Do we continue to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Do you continue uh, to act as Allah has commanded us to act? That's the key thing. This is the way you're supposed to look at the concept of this. So, uh, obligation is that we put all our efforts to, 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 to gain the risk. As a matter of fact, there, there's a hadith of Rasulullah that talks about that, that some of the sins are not forgiven by salah and zakat, but they can be forgiven by the seriousness of gaining the risk. So that's an obligation on us to be to, to be serious, to put an effort, wholehearted effort to gain it, but not at the extent of compromising our deen, not at the extent of thinking, if I commit certain haram, I will be able to get <coughs> more risk. Or if I don't fulfill certain obligations, maybe I'll be able to put more time and I'll be getting more risk. This is not how the, it works. This is what, this is the key thing that I would like you to go with. Now, there is a concept that how do you increase your risk? Well, if the risk is written by Allah subhanahu wa before we were even born, then how do you increase that? The idea of increasing the risk is, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, truly my, my, my rub enlarges the provision for whom he wills of his slave and also restricts it to him. Allah is the one who does that. Increase it. Now, what does it mean by increase? And Imam Nabawi has mentioned, increase actually is not that you are now, let's say, 
Allah wrote, the decree was that you will be making in your lifetime $100 million, for example, or the, the, the benefits of $100 million. It's not that it will increase to $120 million. First of all, we don't know how much Allah has done for us. Okay? So it's not us to be judge of that. So hence, we continue to put our efforts as much as we can. If it's supposed to be number-wise, supposed to increase as Allah has written, it will increase. If it's not, it will not increase. But what really is the barakah in the risk? All increase in the risk means is we are able to do more of the whatever Allah has written for us. Okay? And I'll give you an example of it. Even the time. All of us have the same 24 hours in a day, right? It's not like a, a mean gets more time in the day than I, I do. 24 hours, 24 hours. But mashallah, he is very efficient in his time, uh, what is it called? Time management. So he is able to gain more out of very same time that I could not. So that's the barakah in the time. Same thing happens in the barakah in the rest. For Allah has given provision us with, so some of us are able to get, gain more out of it, right? While the others are not. And that's the barakah we look How can we do this? There are many verses of the Quran and the hadith on that subject. For example, the tawakkal or the trust relies in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. The hadith says, if you would trust in Allah, he truly should be trusted and he should we will surely provide for you as he provides for the birds. They set out in the morning with empty stomachs and return in the evening with full stomachs. Okay? But the thing is, reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Again, reliance on Allah, trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, tawakkul on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is part of our iman. So if we have the reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that increases this trust. But what, again, that increases means, means what? Increase again is there is a barakah in your risk. You are able to do more out of it. Okay? Same way, the ibadah. The hadith says, Rasulullah said, O son of Adam, take time out of constantly worship me. I will fill your heart with contentment and remove your poverty. If you do not, if you do, not do so, I will make your hands constantly occupied, but I will not remove your poverty. SubhanAllah. How many times we see this? How many times? I mean, our life, lifetime we see. Look at the brothers and sisters in Gaza. Okay? I was just watching the video this morning. A father is carrying his child. He has not received the birth certificate yet, and he received the death certificate before the birth certificate. And still he's saying, Hasbi Allah, when I'm He's still thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. At the same time, he's reminding the ones who do have power and authority and doing nothing, doing nothing. And as another picture, subhanahu so many things are going on that I'm not here to just report back everything. Like a picture was showing some donkeys in a cart are pulling or taking the people away out of the troublesome area in Gaza. And it says, these donkeys worth more than these hukam we have, the rulers we have around uh, around Palestine. They worth more. They they, 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 they are producing more for, for the ummah than the one who do have all the power. But point here is this ibadah, this connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You can see that the contentment on the faces of these brothers and sisters who are going through atrocities after atrocities. On the other hand, we may have all sorts of luxuries in this dunya. I mean, something over, I don't, I don't have enough. I don't have enough. Like the hadith of Rasulullah talks about that. If you give the, 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 the son of Adam one valley of gold, he will ask for another one. You give him two, he will ask for another one. His stomach cannot be filled except by the dirt. What means by uh, the, uh, until the son of Adam dies, he will continue to ask for more and more. The only thing that can make us content is connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we understand that I cannot increase or decrease this is what I am getting in this world. Whatever Allah has written, I have to, I will readily become content to it. So this idea has to be clear in our mind. Similarly, tawbah or the repentance from the sins. As the hadith says, it talks about the, 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 the uh, about Muhammad uh, 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 they say that 
said, I ask forgiveness for, of your Lord, where he is of forgiven. He will send rain to you in abundance and give you increase in wealth and children and provide for you gardens and provide for the rich. But it's connected to the Tawbah. Returning back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, asking for forgiveness of our sins. Allah is the one who provides. Keeping kinships or giving giving sadaqah. Most of the people living in the capitalist society, it makes you think this way the moment you give something, you're losing. The moment you give something to somebody, you're losing. Allah is saying something else. He said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that the example of those people who spend in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is like a saying is the example of like that seed that you put into the ground and seven sanabil sanabil is what? You know the uh, 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 ears, uh, is it called ears? For the, for, for the corn, for example. And each one has 100, 100 uh, 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 grains in them. So you put one, one seed and 700 seeds come out of it. Allah said, not only that. Allah said, This is just an example of saying that. 700. Allah gives more. So when we spend in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's not decreasing in any way. Allah gives the return in multitudes. And sometimes we don't realize that, first of all, not only in this dunya, but in the akhirah as well. And even in this dunya, I, have, I can look back in my own life. There are many a times, whenever you spend in the path of Allah, you see that you're getting in multitudes, even in this dunya. Even in this dunya. So this is just shaitan who, who, who wants you to think this. A shaitan is the one who threatens you with poverty. He threatens you with poverty. And he Fahsha here not necessarily means illicit behavior of uh, 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 here fahsha means that he threatens you that if you spend in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you will become poor. Well, Allah is the one who is, is, is reminding us of his maghfirah, reminding us of his followers of his blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we spend the prayer for Allah. Same way, honesty and fairness in the trade, these things also gain more wealth for you than people think by swearing. You know that the <coughs> uh, you find the guy who will be saying, especially uh, uh, um, our own stores, uh, some of the Arab stores, the Desi stores you go, and they will be saying, Wallahi, my, my, my product is the best. And you don't have to say that. Uh, why, why a person has to lie? Maybe it is the best, but everything is the best, I said, I, I have a question. And uh, I'm getting the same product from the else also. Why yours is the best and better than the others? It's the same thing. So, but anyways. We don't have to lie, we don't have to make up stuff, we don't have to say things like, for example, you're trying to sell this phone and you start saying, oh brother, I am selling you at a cheaper price than what I bought for this. So, so, I mean, these kind of things, maybe that's the of tongue sometimes, but we don't have to lie thinking that you will make more money out of it. No, you won't, you won't get more provision. Honesty and fairness in the trade, these are things that can bring more. Similarly, performing Hajj and Umrah, it brings the barakah in your in, in your earth. Even getting married brings more barakah in your risk. Having children brings more barakah in your risk. It increases the risk for you this way. And of course, the dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So there are many ahadith thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Toba, I already talked about. Uh, many, many things that can be utilized for when it comes to increasing your wealth or having the barakah in the wealth that you are, uh, uh, that you have. So I'll, I'll, I'll stop the, the talk here, inshallah, and if there's any questions or comments about, about the subject.